fear of robots is really fear of the unknown and when people get the opportunity to interact with robots very few people fear robots after that opportunity because once you actually meet a robot and you actually discover how limited they are then it takes a lot of the fear away because on the surface while some robots might look a bit human they're not human and they never will be human and there really are very strong limitations to what they can do However, there are also some great things that you can do with robots. So I think robots are an opportunity for us to be able to do a lot more. My name is Sue Kay and I was born in Newcastle in New South Wales and I now live in Brisbane. My role is currently as the Research Director for Cyber Physical Systems with CSIRO's Data61, which encompasses robotics, sensing, cybernetics, uh, computer vision, all of the good stuff. What I find exciting about robotics is its potential to augment human capability. There are a lot of problems that the world faces that as humans we haven't been able to solve. And yet what robots do is give us an opportunity to expand what we can do so that we might be able to tackle some of those challenges. For example, uh, many people don't realise that we can apply robots to solve some environmental challenges such as sensing um, and looking around for endangered species, actually remediating the environment by planting species that need to be replaced and also protecting the environment by potentially removing things like plastics from the world's oceans. So there are a number of grand challenges like that that I think with the help of robotics we will finally be in a position to help solve. We actually uh, could be designing robotics across all industry sectors because that is the impact that robotics is having, it's, it's so broad. Uh, but in particular, the main industries that we're working with at the moment tend to be in manufacturing, in uh, energy and resources, and also uh, in infrastructure and construction. So a project that my robotics group have been working on uh, that I find really fascinating is around evolutionary robotics because a lot of our current design of robots is actually limited by humans because there are only so many things humans can imagine. Uh, and while we have often taken a lot of our lead in design from the animal kingdom and actually replicating uh, some of the amazing things that animals do and then trying to get robots to do the same thing, we're still limited by our observations. And so what this team is doing is they're applying machine learning to first of all go through the range of um, new innovative materials that are developed every day and work out what is the best material we should be making our robots out of for whatever the purpose is that robot is designed to serve. And so machine learning is um, about developing algorithms that allow robots or just computers to think in a way and learn in a way that's much more similar to humans. And that's really just how you can get a robot to operate and instead of giving it lines and lines of code to give it step-by-step -step instructions of what it should do and how it should behave, you actually get it to learn by observation and also be able to make decisions itself. In front of me here is a robot leg. It doesn't really look like a leg. You wonder whether a person would have ever thought of designing a leg like this. Um, but it has been designed for a robot that walks through water. And we have multi-material printers here that allow us to prototype these things quite quickly. So then we can use machine learning to um, actually put this on a robot like we have here and then actually try and get that leg to figure out how to walk. And all of that is done by um, trial and error. We put those machine learning algorithms to the test and we figure out, well, how well did it go? In that way, we can go through a whole host of designs and we can come up with designs that people might never have thought of. So it opens up a whole range of new designs that I think will lead us to some very imaginative robots.
The reason that we don't see more robots in our workplaces and in our homes is actually because robots aren't quite ready to be in those environments yet. So although we've had robots in areas like manufacturing for more than 70 years now, the reason that we have is because those environments are very structured. So you can control all of the flow of materials in and out of that environment. Whereas most of our homes and workplaces are much more complicated. And one of the things that we're looking at to solve that is rather than developing robots from the ground up, how can we convert commodity products that you find commonly in your homes or in your workplaces into robots? So the project that I'm very excited about at the moment is called AnyWheel and essentially it's how we've developed a robot wheel or a set of robotic wheels that you can place on a product and turn it into a robot. Um, an example of how this might work, you can imagine in a warehouse where you have trolleys that people are moving from A to B, instead of um, actually replacing those with robots, all we do is actually add the robotic wheel to those trolleys. So you don't really have to change the whole layout of the warehouse to accommodate the robots. We're able to actually just change the things that are already in place, but make them into robots. And this gives a great potential for us to turn many different things into robots and at very low cost. So it really is just an evolutionary thing. Um, eventually robots will definitely be taking a more active role in all of our lives. I'm on the board of Women in Robotics. At the moment there's less than 10% female participation in robotics and we think that one of the things that we need to do is support the women who are currently in the industry and also make it a more supportive environment for women who are considering entering the industry. I encourage women to get into robotics because I think that it is crucial that women actually are given some say in how a lot of these technologies are developed because I believe these technologies really are going to make a big difference to the way we live our lives and the way we conduct our business. And at the moment, with only one gender being mainly represented in the industry, that's not a very healthy mix. We risk alienating a whole generation of women from the very technologies that could actually make their lives better. My advice for anyone who's interested in getting into robotics is just to get involved start to connect with your local robotics community and don't get hung up about what your background is. It, it is not crucial for you to have a background in computer science or engineering. There are a lot of different ways that you can contribute to the robotics industry. So we have a whole range of people who contribute from designers to people who specialize in human interaction. We also need people who are social scientists who can really look at the impact of these technologies on society. So there's a whole range of different ways that you can apply your knowledge and skills to robotics. So I think you just need to go forth and be part of the community.